Hey family, I'm Pastor Torre. I'm Pastor Sarah. And listen, you're getting ready to hear an incredible word from the Lord. I believe it's going to bless you. I believe it's going to be timely. Do me a favor, share the message. If it moves you, share the message. And then also you have an opportunity to be a part of not only helping to spread this message, but to be a part of our outreaches. We're doing a lot of practical things to be a blessing to someone. So feel free if God so moves you to use the information here in the video to support what we're doing. We're being a blessing not to just people spiritually, we're being a blessing to people practically. We love you. Get into this message, it's gonna change your life. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I love the words of that song. God speaking in first person is saying, I am good, you are loved. And somebody needs to receive that right now. A lot of times we, we hear, you know, church slogans and we have these colloquialisms, you know what I mean? God is good all the time and all the time God is good and, and, and it's fine because it's true. But sometimes we, we don't allow the words to really sink in. And uh, I love Jeremiah 29, 11. You know I do if you've been around me for any length of time. But God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Another translation says they are good and not evil. To give you a future and a hope. God is for you. Do me a favor, right where you are, put it right there in the comments. God is for me. Just come on, just, just prophesy to yourself. Remind yourself that God is for you. God is on your side. He is your breakthrough. He is your friend. He is your faithful provider. He is your confident. Go ahead, put it in the comments. God is for me. God is for me, right? And if you want to put God is good, put it there. And then if you see somebody put God is good, you put all the time. Come on, let's just have church right there in the comments. God is for me. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. It is so wonderful to be here with you. We had an incredible uh, 10 days of fasting and prayer that, that ended uh, on Monday, and I don't know, in my own personal life, I talked about it on Thursday briefly, but, but in my, my personal life, I saw God move in areas of family, uh, in areas of ministry, in areas of, of uh, financial breakthrough, to be honest, some things opened up in September, and I've received testimonies from, from many of you on social media about things that God did, and I just pray that as you stepped into this new year, this, this new season, that, that God allowed your eyes to be a little more clear. I, I pray that maybe some burdens were lifted off of you. I pray that some yokes were broken. And, and, uh, and I'm excited to get into uh, what I believe is going to be a two or three week series. We'll just see what the Lord does over the next couple of weeks. And I want to talk to you about something I think is, is extremely important. And so let me just first draw your attention to one verse in the scripture. This will be our foundational verse for today. It's in Psalm uh, the first psalm and the third verse, and we're just going to read it. It's not unfamiliar. You know it, but we're going to unpack it a little bit, and we're going to talk about something that I believe is highly important, especially for times like we are in now. And so Psalm 1 and 3, it reads like this. He or she, in your context, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. Let, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this moment that we have here together with you. God, you are good and you are ready to feed and we are yours and we are hungry. And so God, we have the perfect scenario for a powerful connection that will allow you to be satisfied because you fed us and us to be satisfied because we've been filled. God, you know what every person that's under the sound of my voice needs. You know, God, what's in their life presently, what is ahead. You know the plans you have for them. And so, Father, may we meet together here in your word and may we eat and be affirmed and confirmed and built up and edified and, 
and made wiser because of the bread of life, which is your word that you will impart unto us today. And by the time we're finished today, may we be better, may we be lighter, may we be stronger, may we be wiser, may we be more secure, more grounded than we have been at any other time. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel a, a sweet presence, sweet presence. And I believe it's the presence of the Lord, and I pray you feel it as well. And it truly is an honor to have this opportunity uh, to share together, to break bread together. And I'm so glad that you are watching. I'm so glad that you're listening because I believe that God is going to sharpen you today. Um, in times like these, the times that we're in right now, forward is difficult to determine. And what I mean by that is that our world right now is so tossed and, and it's so turbulent in the times that we're in that makes it hard to truly and securely decipher whether we're winning or losing, progressing or not. Because I, I might be up now, but will I always be up? Or maybe I'm, I'm in a down season in the present moment, and I'm wondering if I will ever get up. In moments like this, I don't know if I can fully trust images of success because I might be in a place of success right now, but, but things are so unstable that loss and destruction could be right around the corner because of all the things that are taking place in today's world, from, from pandemics to shutdowns, from racial visions, racial divisions, rather. I wish we had vision as it relates to race, but we'll get there. Racial divisions to violence to even recession. So there are all these things that, that have created instability and the confidence that we used to have in what it means to be moving forward, what it means to be progressive, we struggle to have. And the reality of it is we don't really know where things are headed. But regardless of any of that, if you're like me, I have a desire to have my life be positioned in such a way that I constantly move forward no matter what season I'm in. Are you tracking with me? And that's what I want to get you to, to this message. If you get nothing else out of this message today, I want to bring you to a place where you are aligned in such a way that you are able to move the needle forward in every season, just like this verse says, which we're going to unpack. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. And you do it by this thing called the anointing. If you're tracking with me, put it in the comments right now. I, I want the anointing. In fact, if you really understand what the anointing is, I want you to put it in the comments and say, I need the anointing. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this thought down. We're going to unpack this today and, and we'll go even deeper next week. But there's nothing that you can ever be in life that is greater than being anointed. There's nothing that you can ever be in life that's greater than being anointing, anointed. So much so that David, who is the writer of the majority of the Psalms, as he sits down to pen the Psalms, the first thing he writes about is the benefits of being anointed. He had all kinds of experiences. David went from shepherd boy to, to king and of Israel and all um, a bunch of things in between and legacy was produced out of him. In fact, the Messiah came out of his lineage. But when he sits down to write his worship songs, the first thing that is on his mind is to talk to you and I today about the benefits and the power of being anointed. So, so this series that, that we're, we're embarking upon today is called The Anointing, and I want to talk about that, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that, and we're going to understand it, and we're going to understand how to access it, and I'm going to talk about all the benefits of it. And so let's 
first begin by answering the question, what is the anointing? What is it? If you're taking notes, write this thought down. The anointing is the, un, is the incontestable, undeniable mark of God on a person's life. Hallelujah. It is the incontestable. It cannot be contested. Mm. You may not like the way I look, but you cannot deny my anointing. You may not like how I move. I may be different from you. I may not be what you're used to or even your, your cup of tea. But when a person is anointed, you cannot deny that the mark of God is on their life. And anointed people oftentimes have complicated lives because, because God has put his mark on them. He has put his seal on them. And, and, and when you want to hate them, you can hate them all day long. But you can't stop them. I'm getting ahead of myself. Say, 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 just take it slow, PT. Say, take me slow, PT. Take me slow, PT. The, the anointing is what moves the needle of progress in a person's life in any season. When I'm looking at Psalm 1 and 3, when it says, he shall be like a tree, David is speaking from experience. If you look at the first, the previous verses, he's talking about people who align themselves to experience the full grace of the anointing. He says, that person, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, planted, planted, planted. That's grounded by the rivers of water, not just river water, rivers, all these streams of refreshing and these streams of, of that which creates progress for every scenario in your life. And this anointed individual brings forth fruit in every season. The leaf of that individual cannot cannot wither mm. because the anointing cannot shrink. The anointing is God. We're going to get into it. And whatever he does shall prosper. So, so, so as we step into times where we are concerned about, am I really, pro what does progress look like? Am I in the position to progress in this life. I, I'm not just trying to survive 2020. I'm not just trying to survive this season. I believe that according to Psalm 1 and 3, in every season, I can be fruitful. And whatever, whatever my anointed self does will prosper. I believe that. But I don't believe it based in my own strength or based in my own ability. I believe it because I have this thing on my life, this thing over my life, and this thing is called the anointing. And I'm thinking about something that David said in, in Psalm 27 and 4. I quote it often. He says, the one thing that I desire, that will I seek and then he ultimately says that I might dwell in the presence of God to behold the beauty of God. And in essence, what David is saying that you can take things from me. I don't want to lose anything, but you, 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 you can take my, my castle. You, you, you can take my robe. You can, you can take my riches. You can, you can take my, my jewels. You, you, can, you can take relationships from me. You can take these things. I don't want them to go, but you can take those things. But one thing that you cannot have is my anointing. I feel that for somebody. And I feel the same way, right? When I, when I look over my life, you know, one day I, I was sitting with my son recently and and I was just talking to Isaiah about, about life and, and, and son, you're, 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 you, you, know, you haven't been with me all my life. You're only 18. You'll be 18 at the end of this month. Um, and, you know, you've only, been, you know you, you've only been with me for a certain amount of time. You know, and so you see where I am, but you don't quite know how I got there. Uh, and um, it's really important for me as it relates to my kids, you know, natural kids, spiritual kids, those I have the, 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 the privilege of, of influencing is to, to show them how I got to where I am and how I'm getting to where I'm going. It was by one thing and one thing alone, and that is the anointing. When I decided to value the anointing more than anything else in life. What I decided to value the anointing more than people's opinions. Mm. When I decided to value the anointing more than my comfort. Well, when I decided to value the anointing more than anything else, the anointing came to me without measure and yet still comes. 
Can I take my time and teach today? And so the anointing, if you're wondering how you're going to move forward in a crazy time, my word for you is get anointed. And if you are anointed, stay anointed. But let's unpack it more. The anointing is the incontestable, undeniable mark of God in a person's life. This anointing will, will sustain you in every season. I was looking through some old photos from 2013 recently, and some of you may or may not know my story, but that was 2013 was one of the, the darkest years for me. It was a difficult year. It was so crazy because... It was the best of years and it was the worst of years. I can remember being in this season and being at the time, you know, I moved from my house, I was in an apartment. And I can remember in that apartment wondering if I would ever get through this season, if I would ever get through this difficult time, if, if, if God was for me still. If I, how could God be for me and I have to go through such a difficult time? And I remember being in an apartment and looking out and I had, I had windows, I had floor to ceiling glass windows and I would look out and I would have, you know, I can see the sky and the hills and all that kind of stuff and, and God would just speak to me. And I, I'm telling you, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where, you know, you, you know that God is for you but you just, you've never seen God deliver you out of this thing. You've never seen God deliver you out of this particular situation. You've never seen God show up. And as I look back, the one thing that I remembered and the one thing that I never doubted in that season that was dark and, and, and 2014 was just the greatest year ever. But the one thing that I remember in that time is that I was anointed. I may have lost some things in that season, and I did, but I was still anointed. I may have lost some friends in that season, but I was still anointed. I, I may have lost uh, some, some, some community, some sense of community in that season, but I was still anointed. And it was the consciousness of me being anointed by God and God alone that gave me the strength to weather that season and to come out on the other side of that season with the evidence. See, it says it brings forth, this anointed person brings forth fruit in every season. Sometimes the fruit of certain seasons is maturity. Sometimes the fruit of certain seasons is the development of a level of faith that causes you to be unshakable. See, I didn't think that I was bearing fruit. I, I was saying, God, God, I used to have fruit. Now the fruit is gone. Something must be wrong, not realizing that the Bible says that the person who bears fruit, he prunes so that they might bear forth more fruit. And so I came out of that time, and I'm standing in this season seven years later with unshakable faith and unshakable belief and believing in the power of the anointing unlike ever before. And I want to talk to somebody who's watching right now or who's listening right now, and maybe you're going through a difficult season. Maybe 2020 has kicked your tail. But my question for you is, are you still anointed? And if God has anointed you, then watch this. He has anointed you to come through because the anointing is everything. The anointing, the anointing is God's guarantee of your progress. I want to talk about the anointing. If you're taking notes, write this thought down. God recognizes, respects, and always validates anointing. God recognizes, respects, and always validates anointing. I'm going to give you five things really quickly that you need to know about the anointing, five things. The first thing you need to know is that the anointing can be despised but not stopped. <laughs> 
It can be despised and not stop. In fact, I'll tell you right now, and, and again, we're going to get into, I'm going to teach this thing. You're going to understand. Uh, I'm introducing you to the anointing. We're going to talk about how to get the anointing. We're going to talk about, we're going to get into the deep, you know, Old Testament, New Testament theologi theolo theology about the anointing. I'm going to get into all that, but I want to introduce you to the beauty of it before we even go down that, that road. The anointing, I was going to say, can't get you in trouble. No, the anointing will get you in trouble. It is, it, is, it is an irritant to everything that's not like God. I can't tell you how much trouble. Let me tell you something. Before I knew I was anointed, man, I didn't have no problems. I mean, it, it was like cool. But then, but then when I surrendered, I'm going to talk about when I surrendered to the anointing that was on my life and, and the anointing began to grow me and prosper me and and. And, and bring me wisdom and favor. Man, it got me into all kind of trouble. I'm thinking about Joseph right now. If you read the story of Joseph, Joseph got in trouble with his brothers. They literally threw him away. They threw him in a pit. <laughs> and there was only one reason for them doing that, because he was anointed. Because God had chosen him. Because, watch this, the mark of God, the un deniable, incontestable mark of God was on his life, and that mark got him put in a pit. I want to tell somebody right now, I don't know who I am talking to. You have been mistreated, not because there is something wrong with you, but because there's something extremely right about you. The anointing will get you in trouble. But here is the good news. It will be. I was going to say it can be despised. Maybe I put it there. It will be despised, but it cannot be stopped. And I think that that's what frustrates certain souls and spirits the most is that, is that you know, you know when, when, when you despise someone, you, you wish that they would quit. <laughs> when you despise someone, you wish that they would just go away. But, but what, one of the things that God does is, is God will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. It's the craziest thing ever, God. I want to be left alone, God. My anointing is getting me in trouble. I want to be left alone. And then you go preparing a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And I got to sit there and eat. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. You know what I mean? It's the craziest thing. And so, and so, and so, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting distracted. But, but listen, listen, I'm personal. The anointing can be despised, but it cannot be stopped. Stay anointed. Don't shrink back. This is, this is turned into something I didn't plan on, on it being. So you must be there. You must be on the other side of this, 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 this audio recording, this video, this live stream. You must be on the other side of it. Don't, 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 don't turn off your anointing to fit in. Go, go through, man, it took me, honestly, let me count. It took me 12 years in ministry being anointed to truly find my tribe because my anointing constantly and consistently would get me in trouble. Because your anointing, watch this, my level. Your anointing continues to grow and grow and grow. And, and there's certain things that you have to do. You have to keep surrendering your anointing to God. And as you continue to grow and grow and grow, sometimes you bypass people who stop growing. And instead of coming to you, it's kind of like, like Cain and Abel. You know, we, we know that Cain killed Abel but because Abel was, man, he was anointed and he was doing the right thing. What Cain should have done was sat down at Abel's feet and said, Abel, can you teach me how to be anointed so that I can grow, thrive, and prosper? But sometimes those souls and those spirits, they, they don't get that. They just, instead of paying the price that, that you are paying, maybe they don't see the price, but, but instead of doing what you are doing to, to continue to grow and increase and multiply, they would rather kill you. And so, and so, so instead of, I'm too lazy to do the work to increase my anointing so that the fullness that God has for me can be realized, but I have enough creativity to kill you? Anyway, stay anointed. Stay oily. Stick with it. Man, it's, I wish I could sit down with you in your home and, and tell you stories about what I've sacrificed for the anointing. And, and it looked like, Things were, were passing me by. It looked like I was missing things, but I wasn't missing anything. My, my spirit was being developed in such a way so that God 
when God finally brought me to where he was going to bring me, I would be all set. And I rubber band catapulted past, arrow past those who were taking shortcuts on the way to greatness. Ooh, I, I, I'm, I'm, this is just coming out. I'm sorry. So the anointing can, I say will, be despised, but it can't be stopped because what God has for you is for you. What he has planned for you is going to be realized. I just hear the words, these two words for somebody. Stay anointed. Keep doing the work. Keep doing the things that got you the grace. Go back to your journal. Go back to the moments. Go back to the place where you and God had powerful and crazy encounters and whatever you did to get to that position, however you prostrated yourself, whatever you said, whatever you let go of, whatever disciplines you worked during those times, go back to them because I'm telling you, it is the anointing that is going to move the needle of your life forward in this season. If that's your word, so that's my word, PT. Put it in the comments. That's my word. That's my word. Second thing I want you to know about the anointing is this. The anointing doesn't play fair. <laughs> it doesn't play fair. What, what do you think I mean by that? Uh, again, a lot of this, this week uh, is going to be a lot of testimony, a lot of personal testimony. But, you know, I didn't like, I didn't come up in ministry in the traditional routes. Here's what I mean about the anointing not playing fair. There are people who have worked much harder than me who have been around the right people in the right circles, whatever that means, for much longer than me. There are people who have been to all the conferences and all the people and, and, you, know, and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. They're in the in crowd, right? My, I'm, I'm from the business world. When, 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 they were, when, when many of the, the people that are great today were, were going to conferences and, and, and doing all that kind of stuff in youth camp, and, or not youth camp, but summer camp, whenever they were doing all that thing, all that kind of stuff, I was building my business. My, my background is corporate America, is marketing, is business. That's what I was doing. I was in the tech sector. I, I, I owned my first profitable company in, in tech when I was in my 20s. So while they were shouting, and nothing wrong with that, I shout too now. But while they were doing all that, I was somewhere else. I wasn't even in it. I don't come from a long line of preachers and, and apostles and prophets and bishops. I don't come from any of that. I just got touched by God one day, surrendered my life to him, and the next thing you know, he is sitting me amongst the kings in ministry, generations of greatness, and all of a sudden, and I used to get in trouble for it because guys would look at me like, who is this guy? And then don't mess around and marry the, the Pope of Pentecost's daughter. <laughs> and now you have a seat. That, what, what happened? The anointing. It isn't fair. It doesn't make sense. And, and don't ever apologize for being anointed. And don't ever think small of the anointing. It doesn't play, play fair. You know, I, like to, I used to tell guys, because, you know, I used to be around people, and they'd be jealous, you know, and, and you could just see it, you know, like jealousy. You're like, I can smell it. Like, it has a, an odor. You can sense it, and it can't be high. Oh, God bless you. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> you turn around, and you can just feel the knife, right? You walk away, you pull the knives out your back and stuff like that. You know, like, uh, that one got in a little bit, you know. And I... I ain't mad at you. I get it. It ain't fair. When you were in shut-ins, three or four, three or four nights in a row, I get it. I get it. it ain't fair. You're praying, you know, and, 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 and shut-ins, and, 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 and you've never seen me before, or, or people like me. You've never seen this anointed person. Who in the, in the world is this person coming on the battlefield? to fight this giant named Goliath, and we have been in the army forever, serving Israel with faithfulness. And, and this boy that we've never even seen before, he is so insignificant. I'm talking about the one who wrote this song. 
He is so completely insignificant, nobody even knows his name. When they come to the house to anoint somebody, they're not even thinking about him. Who is this boy? And now all of a sudden, while while I'm trying to get battle ready, he comes in, takes the head of the giant off, slaughters the giant. Now everybody's singing his name and he's hanging out with Saul the king now. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. But it is what it is. And what I used to tell people when I would get tired of their shenanigans, I would say, man, don't blame. Don't blame me. Blame the anointing. Are you tracking with me? Can we have a real conversation? Because I believe that you're attracted to this ministry. You're attracted to the word that my wife and I carry. It's because you're anointed. You're anointed. And I'm going to talk about that even more. So, the anointing can be despised but not stopped. The anointing doesn't play fair. Three, the anointing levels the playing field and evens the score. You talk about fairness. You know, my wife and I were having a conversation about what what is fair? Because, Because this might seem unfair over here, but then, but this over here balances it out. I need to say that better. What I've learned about life is nobody gets everything. So, so this person having this situation may seem completely unfair, but somewhere on the other side of the world or sometimes right around the corner, this person has all of that, but none of that. Are you tracking with me? So, so in a way, what I've learned about the anointing is it levels the playing field. And what I mean by that in particular is like my, my, my degree is in business. That's my background. My background is business, but yet the anointing had me write a book, the book Wholeness, that, watch this, licensed therapists are using with their clients. I didn't go to school for psychology. I wanted to go to school for psychology, but that's not, that's not what happened. That's not my route. My route ended up being business. But somehow, some way, the anointing adds things to you that you never personally experienced or learned. So it levels the playing field. I I don't have an MBA, but I have MBA. I have people with MBAs, people at the top of their game that literally come to me for wisdom and counsel and guidance. I was looking at the photo the other day and uh, and I was was at this dinner with, and it was just, and and it's it's never about money with me to be honest with you because I, I, you know, it's not. But you know, I, I'm, I found this old photo of mine. It's like four, four years ago, four or five years ago. And it was actually, in fact, it was that same year, 2013. I was looking through those photos. You know, you, your iPhone, you can go back and your phone. Anyway, you know, you know what happened. And, and I'm at this table. I'm with this, these group of people. And I'm like, God, wow. And you bring me into the presence and the company and the relationship of billionaires. Because of the anointing. It was the anointing. Not my gift, not my talent. And I know it says your gift will make room for you and bring you before great, great men. That's wonderful. But it was the, the anointing that attracted these people that opened these doors. It levels the playing field. That's why it, it's not wisdom to walk around crying about what you feel like you don't have. Get anointed. Because in the anointing is everything you will ever need to be, everything that God has created you to be so that you can ultimately give him glory and maximize the life that God has for you. Just put it in the comments. God, send the anointing. Send the anointing. So the anointing can be despised but not stopped. The anointing doesn't play fair. The anointing levels the playing field and and evens the score. The anointing brings you before kings. I jumped into that. I'm sorry. And then the anointing breaks yokes. Now, what do I mean by breaks, break yokes? It breaks yokes. The anointing breaks yokes. Sometimes the breakthrough is not in science or medicine or even what therapy can do. I am all for therapy. Let me tell you right now, I'm all for therapy. I think therapy is fantastic. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful uh, to... Uh, submit yourself to licensed professionals who understand the mind, who are professional listeners, and, and those who help you to process, um, you know, your thoughts and your feelings and what you're going through. But sometimes, sometimes, it can only take you so far. 
And sometimes it is just, it is the anointing. I've been in moments with people who have been in therapy for years, for years, for years, and, and, and I'll get with them and, and they'll think it's going to be just like another therapy session or whatever, and, and God will do something. God will show up and he will reveal something or break something and they get freed even though they had all of these experience, the anointing breaks yokes. Sometimes what is holding you back is a yoke. It's, it's a spiritual yoke. It's a spiritual bondage, and the anointing is spiritual. I'm not just talking about a gift. I'm not just talking about a talent. I'm talking about the mark of God, and guess what? I'll tell you, it is more than just the mark of God. It is God. It is God channeled through someone who he has anointed, someone who God has called and touched, and he has put his hand on him and his power on him. So when that person shows up, he is the hand of feet of God Almighty himself and the anointing breaks the yoke. And I'll tell you something about the anointing which is interesting. There are some people that are walking around right now that are anointed but don't even know it. They're anointing but don't even know it. I'm thinking about David. And... We know Saul came and Saul literally took the oil and anointed him with oil and the spirit of God, you know, was unleashed upon him from that day forward. It was crazy. But, but I was thinking about David and I realized that, that there was an anointing at work with David when he slayed the lion and the bear. That, there was, that that was an anointing, that, that was the beginning of an anointing. And, and it, maybe for you, there, there are some things that, that maybe you overcame or you escaped because you were anointed. Oh, God, I feel it. Because you're anointed, right? There, there's some things. Before I got to a place where I surrendered completely to what I was caused to, someone caused me to recognize was the anointing. Before I surrendered to what I ultimately came to understand was the anointing, man, I had overcome some stuff. I, I, I had escaped some things. There, there, was, there was something on my life and I didn't know what to call it. I didn't even know what an anointing was. It was none of that. But, but if I was honest, God was with me. I knew that something was with me, and, and it would get me out of trouble, and it would cause me to triumph in circumstances that, that wiped other people out, and I didn't know what to call it. I didn't have language for it, but now, in hindsight, I come to recognize that it was the anointing, and then later on, when I was out doing work, I'll never forget it, when I was out doing work, Serving the homeless and serving the poor. I was in the projects. I was in the Jordan Down projects in Watts. And this, this guy came up to me that I'd never seen before. And he starts talking to me and telling me who I was. And, and he just randomly picked me out and then pulled out this thing of oil. And literally right there on the spot, I, I, I just, I, I'll never forget this day. This was, this was 20 years ago. And right there on the spot, he just starts, man, he starts praying in tongues and he takes his oil out and he anoints my head and he anoints my, my hands. And from that day forward, watch this, I walked in something different. It wasn't that he anointed me necessarily. He did physically anoint me, but God had anointed me before then, but God needed a representation in the earth to come and confirm and affirm and bring clarity to me about that greatness that was on my life. And when I accepted that and I received that, the anointing went to a whole nother level and continues to increase without measure as I surrender myself to God. So you may be out there right now, and this is something that I really want want to lean into and pray into because, again, we're just scratching the surface. I just want to introduce the anointing. But there may be some right now you're watching and you're like, man, you know, I, I feel like you're describing me a little bit. And maybe you're watching and I feel this so strong. And you have never really considered yourself a religious person. That's not your deal. You, you've never really looked at religion in that way. But somehow, 
And even more so recently, God's been touching you. And you have been trying to give context to the special that you've always known that you've had. It doesn't mean that everything in your life was perfect. In fact, it was not in many cases. But you've always, watch this, you have always sensed and felt like there was a way forward. There, there's this seemingly sense of, 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 quite frankly, an optimism that, that you have employed in your life, that you've had, and it's been buried in. But, but now you're in this season right now where you, you've been searching and you've been seeking and you've been trying to find what you didn't even realize, trying to find the author of that special that you've been sensing. And I think that God led you to this message because I believe that God wants you to understand that before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you, set you apart and ordained you. But I think that what God wants you to understand is that grace that you're talking about, that, that grace that, that, that you've resonated with for many years is the seed of the anointing. And if you would receive this word today, and if you would open your heart to the fullness of that seed, then God will unlock it like he did with David. Because let me tell you something. Yes, David conquered the lion. And yes, David conquered the bear before Samuel the prophet came and anointed him. But it wasn't until he accepted the anointing, received the anointing, that he was able to run up on the real giant, conquer that giant, and begin the process of stepping into his future. And so I'm talking to you. I'm going to pause all the teaching and step back into it next week because we've got a lot of ground to cover. You can't cover the anointing in one message. I am introducing the anointing. But I think that there's someone, hallelujah. And right now, you feel, you feel it in your chest right now. And your heart is beating fast. Something's going on. Maybe you feel like David must have felt when the prophet called him. When he wasn't even considering that he was the one the prophet was looking for to be anointed and, and the prophet called him, can you imagine how David must have felt when the prophet said, come here, you. This man of God who had God all in his eyes. I'm talking about the prophet Samuel. He was known throughout Israel as the man of God, the man of God. And he calls you calls you and he says, come here, you're the one. And he's not focused on any of the other brothers. He's not focused. He has found what he came for. Can you imagine what David must have felt like? And he's walking up to the prophet, not knowing what's getting ready to happen, not, not knowing what's getting ready to take place, but sensing deep calling to deep. The greatness of the man of God speaking to the greatness that was inside of David. I think that's how you feel right now. Put it in the comments, that's me. I think that's how you feel. Yes, you. It's your time. The anointing will raise you up so much higher than what's going on in the world right now. Because the anointing is bigger than that. It's greater than that. It's more than that. In every season, <laughs> he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in every season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Who is he? The anointed one. David couldn't wait to tell you how he became David. I got anointed one day. I gave my heart to God. I said, God, here I am. You can have me. I trust you. I'll obey you. And I respect this thing called anointing. Let me tell you something. David respected anointing so much that even when Saul, his enemy, 
His enemy was trying to kill him. God had not removed him yet. And so he recognized the former anointing that was on Saul so much so that even when he had an opportunity to kill who was trying to kill him, he said, I cannot do that. I would be a fool to touch the anointing. He, he respected anointing. He valued anointing. Say this real quick, and we're going to talk more in the coming weeks, but you know, as I talked about a couple of weeks ago, one of the signs of the end times is going to be many people are going to be saying that they're anointed. And what, you, what I see when I hear that is the value of the anointing. See, counterfeit proves value. It, th to imitate means that whatever I'm imitating has great value. And so this anointing thing is calling you. It's calling you. If I'm talking to you, put it right there in the comments. So here's what I want you to do. God has made me like your prophet today. If I'm not talking to you, then just pray for the person I'm talking to. But I think if you're watching, if you're listening, I think I'm talking to you. I think there's a whole nother dimension that God wants to open up to you. And all you have to do is respond, not resist. Just receive it. I can't be anointed without receiving Jesus because Christ literally means anointed. Jesus Christ, Christ, Jesus, the anointed one. He is the anointing. I cannot wait to get into next week. He is the anointing. If you're watching right now and maybe you never considered yourself religious, you never considered yourself religious, but you're something or you wouldn't be here. You're seeking. And I hear God saying, I want to anoint you. I want to make you that Psalm 1 and 3 tree planted by the rivers of water who brings forth its fruit in every season. I want to, I want to move, I want to take anxiety away from you. I, I, want, I, want, I, want to, I want to take the wandering and wondering away from you. I, I want to, to make you confident in the fact that you're moving forward even when it seems like the world has stopped. And I'm going to do it by my anointing. So if that's you, and you say, I just feel something, I want you to repeat after me. Because I believe that there's some of you, something's going to change. From the day that that prophet laid his hands on me, and anointed me with oil. I don't even remember his name. I can see his face. I don't remember his name. He's a weird looking little dude too, you know what I mean? But anointed. But from that day forward, man, I never questioned. I may have sensed that maybe I was anointed. I may have, you know, something was going on. But from that day forward, I knew I was anointed. And when all the haters came because I was anointed, it didn't shake me. I never, from that moment forward, I never questioned what I had. I want to give that to you today. So I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of Jesus. I receive him. I thank you that you made him who had no sin all of mine. I thank you that you put my weakness in the body of Jesus, that you put my brokenness in the body of Jesus, and you nailed it to the cross and put it to death. And just as Jesus was raised up, free and victorious by the power of the anointing, because I receive him, and am therefore in him, I receive that anointing too. Father, I just thank you for all those who are watching right now. Lord, we're going to be in this vein, as you know, for as many weeks as you tell me. 
because you are anointing sons and daughters in this season. I know it, I feel it. This is not about religion. This is about kingdom and inheritance. David was not a one-off. In fact, Christ in this context was not a one-off. Your word says that Christ was the firstborn among many brethren, many sons and daughters. Ooh. I thank you, Lord God, for those who received not only you and not only your spirit, but the anointing that breaks yokes, the anointing that, God, you respect. The anointing, God, that not only that you respect, but everything in creation must respect that everything in creation must bow down to. Oof. I thank you, God, that your son, your daughter, that person who's on the other end of this prayer is getting ready to walk in something different. Is getting ready to walk in something powerful. Wow. They're going to be insulated from the fiery darts of the enemy. And yes, in some cases, they will be despised but not stopped and they will be forward moving and progressing in the things of God from this day forward I just got a glimpse into your future if someone would have told me 20 years ago when that gentleman anointed me on a random Saturday morning as I was doing community service in the housing projects in Watts, California, that 20 years later, there would be literally millions of people reached by the anointing that was in me and counting. It would have been difficult to believe. But I saw your future. God doesn't anoint you for small things. And he's going to take the shackles off of your mind and he's going to take the limits off of your thinking. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you some more. Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing. It's mighty. It's powerful. Even in this moment, God, I want you to remove every distraction away from what you're doing in your son and your daughter in their life. And I sense that there are distractions here trying to figure it out. And I hear God saying, don't, don't do it here. Receive it here first. Our mind always has to catch up to what the Spirit does first. That's why when Paul is talking about transformation, he's talking to people who have already received the Spirit. He says, your spirit is good. The transformation that needs to take place is the renewing of your mind. So I just want you to receive it. I want you to receive it. I'm your Samuel. And I know, watch this, I know that I can't touch you and anoint you with oil, but here is the thing, it's spirit. It's spirit, it transfers spiritually. That's why the Bible says, speak a word. And the sick will be healed. I'm speaking that word over you right now. And I'm claiming that the anointing that you opened up to today is resting upon you and great things and greater things are to come as a result. We're going to continue next week. So much more ground to cover because I want you to understand what you received. But you received something.